Thank you so much for joining us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Carolina Lee. And I'm Dave Wagner. Uh, the crystal clear waters of Florida Springs are a natural wonder, uh, but uh, that bubble from the aquifer gives us refreshing water to drink and scenic places to enjoy. But pollution and excessive pumping are putting these gems at risk. There are laws in place to protect these natural resources and state agencies are supposed to enforce. But 10 Investigates Emerald Morrow found that's not happening the way lawmakers said it should. A tropical paradise. We have over a thousand artesian springs. Flowing from an underwater world. That's the largest concentration of springs these artesian springs in the whole world. Beautiful doesn't even begin to describe these gems. If there was a national park for springs, it would be right here in North Florida. But slowly, the springs are suffering. They're at risk. Some of them are dying. And they're all polluted, almost every one of them is polluted. On an early summer morning in Gilchrist County, a leisurely paddle along the Santa Fe River. This has um, been called the last pristine river in Florida because there's no wastewater treatment plants discharging into this river. There's no pipes withdrawing water directly from this river. But and it's not healthy because of the things that are happening around the river. The springs are being loved to death. When we used to have hundreds of people on a river at a time, now we have tens of thousands of people on a river. Rum Island Spring is one of more than 36 springs that feed the Santa Fe. This is classified as an impaired spring by the state because of the nitrate concentrations. And just a little farther down the river, past another spring run. So these are artesian springs. That's why we call them artesian springs, like artesian water. Bob Knight of the Florida Springs Institute takes us to Gilchrist Blue, where the beauty abounds, but the pollution is even worse. Nitrate is chronically toxic to humans. It's acutely toxic when it's at high enough concentration. So this is the same water that we drink, and we should be worried about that. Aren't springs supposed to be like one of our most pure forms of water? Well, our groundwater is supposed to be. And at springs, uh, that's all they have is the groundwater. But no, we've contaminated with our, our groundwater to levels that are said to be safe to drink by our public health departments, but are um, anywhere from 20 to 100 times or more higher than the natural levels of nitrogen in our in our natural groundwater, our unpolluted groundwater. And that again comes from the fertilizer. Fertilizer, and septic tanks, septic tanks. animal waste, you know, all those things. Two hours south where the Wikiwachi River glistens a glowing green. Its namesake spring pumps out more than 170 million gallons of water a day. It's beautiful. Thousands of people take in this beauty every single year, but the nitrates have polluted the water here as well. We went to Wikiwachi Spring with the Hernando County Health Department for their weekly sampling to see how bad it really is. She tests for bacteria, but we also want to test for nitrates. So. We also want to take a sample. Sure. We put the sample on ice for accurate results and drove it straight to a lab in Tampa. Workers there prepped the sample for testing and sent it to the lab for analysis. This is what we would run it on. So this afternoon, probably about four o'clock, he'll start running because he's got to catch everything that's going out of hold. So if you got a good nitrate hit on this, you're going to see a kind of a deep blue color. Right? Interesting. So not dissimilar to what you see there. Michael Camarada is a lab manager at Advanced Environmental Laboratories. He predicted increased levels of nitrates in our spring water sample. The springs seem to be going up. Why is that? I think it's because of the urban and agricultural. Florida's growing so fast, right? And when you like, um, when the urban development encroaches around that area, then those natural areas that would filter the water before it made it down, to the springs, that's gone, so that's kind of disappearing. Plus you have agricultural livestock and septic tanks. So all those things together, are we're kind of seeing an increase in the springs. And I don't know if it's gonna go down because Florida's a growing state. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection set a limit for nitrates of 0.35 milligrams per liter. Our testing of the Wikiwachi spring came back at 0.8. 
That's more than twice the limit. Nitrate, uh, you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, but it's in the water. We also tested the water at Rum Island Spring, where we first started. Those results came back at 1.95 milligrams per liter, more than five times the limit. Bob Knight says it's even higher at Gilchrist Blue. It's actually at a concentration that's high enough to cause illness in humans and possibly even cancer. Uh, nitrate is, is chronically toxic to people. I mean, are people in danger when they're out here? No, if, if, they, if they drank this water day in, day out, they could be. A serious concern, but who's doing anything about it? We have strong laws that are not being enforced. 37 yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Uh, you vote the bill passes. In 2016, the legislature passed the Springs and Aquifer Protection Act to find sources of nitrogen pollution and left the Department of Environmental Protection in charge of what's called Basin Management Action Plans to clean the pollution up. But Bob Knight says DEP is not doing enough. Their plans don't work, and they know that. They've been told, they've been showed the data, and. Uh, and the public has tried to do something about it, but unsuccessfully. It's very difficult to fight your state. Good afternoon, Your Honors. But some groups are trying. The Florida Springs Council, the Sierra Club, and some other environmental groups across the state are now challenging DEP on this law, also saying the state's plan to clean up the polluted springs within 20 years do not work. But they're very far short. They're very far short. DEP is fighting back, though. The uh, Petitioners in this case have a strong belief as to what the law ought to be and what the law ought to require the department to do when it an, when an enacts a ba basin management action plan. But that's not what the law is. But those who came up with the law disagree. We need to be especially, especially protective of our springs. David Simmons was a Republican senator representing District 9. He's one of the lawmakers behind the 2016 Springs and Aquifer Protection Act, and he says DEP is not following the law the way he and his co-sponsors intended. Is DEP right now breaking the law? I don't believe that the DEP right now has followed through on the directive of the, uh, uh, of the Florida legislature, and that's a simple fact. Under this law, DEP is supposed to make sure when cities and companies pump from the aquifer, it doesn't cause any harm. But Simmons says the department has not properly defined what harm is. The language that I saw that they have been using for the last, uh, you know, six years is, uh, is not the appropriate language and it's not uh, in accordance with the directive that was given. Simmons says he's been meeting with DEP and just submitted a new set of proposed rules for defining harm to better protect our water resources. You cannot withdraw so much water that it is going to be not replenished. Water is a treasure for, uh, for Florida. We have a lot of it. We need to make sure that it's clean and that we preserve it and that in fact it is here for ourselves and for our children and our grandchildren. We've reached out to DEP multiple times and invited DEP to sit down with us for this story, but never got a reply. If you want to learn more about the challenges facing our springs, head to 10tampabay.com.